big news of today, Juan Ayuso testing positive for COVID on a PCR, but remaining in the Vuelta, Simon Yates symptomatic, removed from the Vuelta last week. Pavel Sivakov asymptomatic, uh, left the Vuelta last week. Both were in the top 10 on GC. But this show, as always, is brought to you by Zwift, whether you're just starting out on your cycling journey or are looking for those final tune-ups ahead of a big event or race. Zwift is the online cycling platform that makes things fun, as well as being the named sponsor of the Tour de France firm, Avec Zwift. And this podcast, if you want to find out more about Zwift, the platform, the race, go to Zwift.com. And if you want to try it out, you can get a free seven-day trial. I guess this happened in the Tour de France with uh, Jungles, who won a stage, and Micah, who pulled on Grenoble. Like, could you explain to people, Benji, I guess, what the process is and how it's working in ASO races? Because in the Giro, I don't believe this is the case. Exactly. Basically, just before the Tour de France, the UCI decided to change their policy in regards to COVID. And it wouldn't just be, oh, you're positive, you're out, you're negative, you can stay in. It's not just that anymore. When you do a PCR test, there's this thing called the RT-PCR. I won't go into the details of that. I will just say that there's now an extra thing to it, a number, a value that defines how COVID you are. <laughs> That's actually like a crazy thing to say, but that number evaluates how infectious you are to be deemed. And that number is being decided by the amount of cycles in a process. So they're doing a, a testing process on your PCR test and the amount of cycles they need to go through with that process to find it viral enough to be considered positive and properly infectious. And the less cycles necessary to get to that amount of virality needed to be considered that specific amount of virality, I don't know the specific threshold there, that means the higher your infection risk is. The lower the cycles, the higher your infection risk. Heard from, I think it was Sam Bennett that said when he DNS because of COVID, that he was waiting in the bus and pinning his numbers just before the race, waiting for the results of his viral load which this number is called. And this value, um, basically he was waiting still on that and eventually he was out of the race. I don't know if he actually got that number before the race or he got that after he was already out of the race. So it's interesting. For some teams, it comes in in time. For some teams, it seems to come in just too late. But when it comes to UAE, the special thing is that Machin came out this morning and he said, We've actually got our own PCR testing method or our machine in-house that causes us to be able to analyze that viral load ourselves. Because of that, they were on time to be able to see when it comes to Yuzo that he was on paper not infectious enough. Once you figure out the viral load, you go to the UCI doctor, the organizer's doctor, and your own team doctor. Those three become like the the Dr. Avengers for a second, and they decide based on majority vote if you can start or not. And I'm guessing with Jungles that was the case, with Micah that was the case, and with Ayuso that was the case, that the viral load was not high enough on their RT-PCR testing process compared to, for example, the other riders that stepped out of the race. Now, there's also... I think Herrada said, on, said something on Twitter about some riders that are waiting longer for their RT-PCR viral load results to come in. And the question there is then, my take on this, when it comes to UAE for a second, and when it comes to the UCI policy, do you think it's fair that when a specific policy is stated in the UCI rules, the specific policy that the viral load matters and is deciding whether a rider can stay in the race or not, that that is not by default equally available for all teams? Yeah, I, I'm surprised that um, like it's smart that UAE have their machine. Like, I don't know how much they cost, but 
if it means your guy can who's a top GC rider can stay in the race, that's it's going to pay for itself pretty quickly. But yeah, I would, I'm surprised that teams because like an Akipo Kern Farmer, they've had guys leaving left, right, and center that maybe they can't afford the machine. Like, is there a machine available that is available to everybody, but it just takes too long? And then by the time you get the results back, like surely the race doctor has one at their disposal that they're carrying around i don't know so so to understand the less cycles necessary so to find the viral load threshold that means you're more infectious and the reverse yeah. is true so a uso didn't reach that threshold and the independent organizers doctor uci's medical doctor and the team's doctor decided to keep him in or by majority vote so i guess there's also the case that other teams might just not do this and they just have an internal rule that yeah. you test positive for COVID, you're out of the race for your own health or, or whatever. I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's the case with Ineos. They don't, they don't say on the when Sivakov's out, you know, he said he was asymptomatic. It doesn't say his viral load or whatever. Um, I don't know. I'm surprised. I feel like this is going to be – they're going to solidify this next year because – there's been so many COVID positives this welter. And I'm I would be surprised if um I would be surprised if I use so was the only one of those people to be testing non infectious, if that's a roundabout way of saying that. Yeah, I think so as well. Obviously, not a doctor. Wanna keep uh declaring that but there's also an interesting aspect that a few people brought up on twitter today where a user i think three or two days ago i think just before the time trial came out and said that he was feeling ill and was surprised that he did not test positive when it comes to his covid test and i think i read somewhere that he tested three times negative but was feeling ill and the obvious rumor now the obvious obvious theory of people now is oh he had covid and now only the leftovers are being tested positive. But yeah, this is how the rules work. Eh? He was tested negative. He was feeling ill. We don't know if that illness was related to COVID at that time. The tests say no. We don't know if that test was 100% conclusive because not every test is. But on paper, he was negative during that time. So the rules declare that he doesn't need to be put out of the race at that moment. Now he is positive. But what is in his system when it comes to COVID is not COVID enough to get him out of the race. So people are like saying, oh, does that mean he had COVID and so forth? We don't know, eh? Like, we, we can never know that. I don't think we'll ever figure out that. I mean, it but... seems pretty likely. <laughs> like, <laughs> the, I mean, it seems pretty likely. So what you're telling me is that whilst maybe symptomatic for COVID, he was smashing Rodriguez on mountaintop finishes. I mean, damn, that, that's not looking good for your boy this weekend. Oh. Uh, he be Rodriguez, although he beat him in the TT, but now i got an excuse for that TT. So, I, I, you know, that's great. I think uh, for Bike Exchange, it's not bittersweet in the sense that Yates couldn't continue. It was nothing to do with viral load testing. Yates was sick. Um, so he was out regardless of this. Sivakov, I'm not sure. I don't know if that's if there's an internal Ineos rule about it as well. So it's a bit of a mess. Um, they're probably, with teams taking different positions on it, even next year, there probably won't be. A, like It's clear that UAE have taken the position that if the rider wants to yeah. continue, they're not symptomatic and they don't breach the viral load threshold, they can continue like Micah and Ayuso in the Tour and the Vuelta, as well as AG2R with Jungles in the in the Tour de France. So, yeah, it's just another sort of data point in how the sport is going to continue managing or not very well managing uh, <laughs> COVID. But I don't know. It seemed they got to sort out that that testing machine thing because it does seem yeah. unfair that the if the smaller teams can't access it, that half their team's gone without maybe you know benefiting from it. But yeah, any last thoughts on Ayuso, Benji? I mean, I'm just going to assume his performance will be fine from here on out. Yeah, I guess that's what we have to assume. Eh? We we don't know how much influence was and will be when it comes to that. We will just see what he brings on those climbs, and I think it's going to be similar than the days we had before unless he's at the 
at the precipice of getting proper COVID. That is just him getting into COVID. Then he might be out at a certain point. We don't know that. Let's hope he's not. Let's hope he keeps on kicking. Let's hope we see him on the road in the in a few days. One more thing I have that is actually a question. Like I don't actually know is we see that he is being tested as a positive right now. And this is not on a rest day. So this is an in-team test, most likely. Now, I'm pretty sure the rule says that teams only need to test on rest days now. If you're UAE, like, do you expect them to test every single day until that rest day still? Or do you expect them to just do the test again on the rest day? I think it sounds like they're always test. UAE mm-hmm. do tests every day um, and did at the Tour de France. So it sounds like UAE have a sort of more onerous testing regimen for COVID than other teams or than they are required to have, uh, which I guess is a good thing. Um, and so I'd expect them to, to keep keep testing yep. what's what's curious though benji is what happens if he keeps testing on the rapid test or whatever test they're using he tests positive tomorrow and as you said just positive tomorrow on it do they do the reverse viral load test again because what if so. what if his viral they have to right like what if yep. his viral load has gone up um so they yep. have to keep doing that i guess um otherwise you you you're keeping in the race when he's infectious so yeah <laughs> Very interesting. Um, hopefully it doesn't affect the GC battle any more than it already has. 